Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. Today's module is part two of ultrasound-guided cannulation of arm veins. As we discussed in module one, we'll first want to map out the vein in both short and long axis views to best determine the anatomy prior to a puncture attempt. We'll be using a dynamic technique or real-time guidance for optimal guidance of the needle tip into the vein lumen, and we'll want to use a longer angiocath, usually about a 1.88 inch angiocath, as we're often cannulating veins down at about the two centimeter depth. And for those of you like me who didn't grow up with a metric system, one inch is equivalent to 2.5 centimeters. We need to have a good amount of the plastic catheter in the vein to avoid extravasation of fluids and medications. Here's how to localize a vein using first the short axis orientation. Notice the probe is placed in a side-to-side -side configuration over the patient's basilic vein, and notice that we're coming in with a Q-tip angled at 45 degrees right underneath the probe, and we're pushing down underneath the probe to look for something called the ring-down artifact. This will allow us to localize the vein in a side-to-side -side orientation. Here's the ring down artifact on the ultrasound screen. Notice it's a dark mark that emanates from the surface down towards the basilic vein. This allows us to mark the location for the poke point over the basilic vein. We can also localize a vein using the long axis orientation, and this is helpful in terms of two things. First of all, it allows us to determine the course of the vessel, and second, we can see the needle depth as it comes into the vessel. Notice here we're placing the Q-tip under the distal aspect of the probe. As it's crucial to aim the needle along the long axis trajectory of the vessel so that the angiocath will enter the lumen, we'll first mark a distal poke point using the short axis ring down artifact. As noted here in the illustration to the left, we'll push down with a Q-tip with pressure right over the vessel and we can mark that with a sharpie or a pen. We'll then move the probe a little bit more proximally, as seen in the illustration to the right, and mark a second poke point more proximally. Therefore, the needle will enter at the distal poke point and be aimed towards the proximal vein mark to best enter the lumen of the vessel. To reinforce the point that we need a longer angiocath for these deep peripheral IV insertion attempts under ultrasound guidance, here's a 1.88 inch angiocath that would be great for peripheral IV insertion. The reason is that we're going down about 2 centimeters or more in depth to access these ultrasound guided IVs. And remember that 1 inch equals 2.5 centimeters. We need enough of the plastic part of the catheter within the vein lumen so as not to have extravasation of fluid. Here's an example of an IV cannulation using a short axis orientation, which is the preferred primary orientation for placement of a deep peripheral guided IV. Now notice here the probe marker is configured to the left to orient to the screen indicator dot which is also configured to the left. The IV would then enter underneath the probe at a 45 degree angle. Now as that IV goes in underneath the skin and goes more proximally up the arm, it's important to move the probe a little bit more proximally to stay in line with the tip of the needle. Here's an example of an IV cannulation using the long axis configuration, which as we talked about earlier is good for two things, knowing the course of the vessel up and down the arm, and also knowing the depth of the vessel with regard to the needle tip. Notice here the IV is coming at a 45 degree angle underneath the distal aspect of the probe, which would be located towards the left of the screen. Therefore I'll look for the needle coming in from the left of the screen and going towards the right. Here's an example of what cannulation attempts on vessels using both short and long axis approaches look like using a phantom. To the left we see in a cannulation attempt using a phantom in short axis, notice the echogenic needle tip coming through, permeating the anterior wall of the vessel, and then the echogenic needle tip seen within the vessel lumen. As we talked about, this is probably the preferred starting approach as most times we'll be able to enter the vessel using the short axis approach. But notice how good the long axis technique to the right is in terms of assuring the needle tip depth. And notice there that the needle tip goes through the back wall of the vessel, which is actually a common occurrence, and is pulled back into the vessel lumen. Therefore, you could then thread the angiocath successfully. Now let's take a look at some video from a real cannulation attempt on an ED patient. Notice the target vessel in the middle of the image here, and we can see here the echogenic tip of the needle coming from the surface, permeating the anterior wall of the target vein, and then the echogenic needle tip seen within the lumen of the vessel.
At that point, we would usually have flash of blood within the angiocath, and then we could thread the plastic part of the catheter within the target vessel. Now let's take a look at a deep vein cannulation using the long axis orientation. Here we see the needle coming in from the left to the right. Notice the echogenic needle coming down to the target vessel seen about midway down on the ultrasound image. Notice the tip of the needle seen within the lumen of the target vein. So at that point we've assured that the needle tip is within the lumen at the correct depth and we can go ahead and thread the catheter. Here's another video showing a cannulation attempt in a long axis orientation. Notice the needle coming in, in this case here, from the right. And we see the tip of the needle securely within the vessel lumen. Notice then we're going to pass the plastic